So those who have done statistical mechanics, they will uh, pursue the problem in a slightly different way. But I'm told that uh, some of you are, are from weakest background, so you might not have done particular statistics or these things. So I'll use a somewhat little different approach to talk about degeneracy. So our thing is that we have a very dense star. And we want to ask, once the density becomes high, what new effects come? So imagine that you have a dense object, its radius is r, its mass is m. And you want to find out, because of large density, what all effects can come, which classical physics cannot Deep. If you have mass m, radius r, and let's say mean molecular weight of this object is b. See, most stars are made out of hydrogen. Most. So, in the universe, only 24% by weight is helium. 75% is hydrogen, and 1% is other heavy elements. So therefore, as you can see, hydrogen is already 75% by weight. So therefore, what astrophysicists do, they say that, okay, when I'm dealing with large astrophysical systems, then what I will say is that I will say that average mass, average mass of a particle, average mass of a particle that constitutes the star, is written as mu times mass of the hydrogen atom. And mu will be slightly greater than 1 because there are also heavier elements uh, present other than uh, hydrogen atoms. Therefore, if the mean mass of a particle is mu times mh, if the total number of total mass of the star is m, how many particles are there? Yeah. Number of particles? Yeah. Number of particles constituting the star will be how much? M divided by mu mh. So this is the number of particles which is present in the star. Okay. If this is the number of particles present, what is the average separation between typical particles? So, average separation, average separation between typical particles, call this R0. How much is R0? N is the total number of particles. Imagine, when I am saying average, what we are saying is imagine that these N particles are uniformly distributed within this field. If it is uniformly distributed, then how much will be R0? It will be roughly Q root of 4 pi by 3 times number density, where n number density, number density n is defined to be total number divided by 4 pi by 3 r. This is the total number of particles, this is the total volume, so average number density. Why is it average? Because I have assumed that it is uniform, but in general for a star it is not uniform, but it is the average number density. And why is it that the average separation between atoms is 1 over 4 pi by 3? and its tube group. The reason is this, that imagine that you have one particle, another particle, there is a factor of 2, I have neglected, actually what should have been done is, so 2 hours, 1 over half or could have been written. So, one particle within this body, so therefore, if this I am calling it R0, 
that one particle divided by 4 pi by 3 r0 q must be the number density. Okay. 1 divided by 4 pi 3 r0 q must be equal to number density because there is one particle occupying a volume r0. So therefore, r0 q is 1 by 4 pi 3 r0. Therefore, r0 is equal to Okay. Is that clear? Hmm? That is the reason why the average. So actually, the average separation is twice r0. So, so probably what I should be calling is twice r0. Okay. So this is the average separation. But now, all of you have heard about uncertainty principle, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. What does it say? Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Right. Uncertainty principle says that if you have a particle, if you are trying to measure its position and momentum at the same time, then the uncertainty in its position times uncertainty in its momentum, the product has to be always greater than equal to h divided by 4 pi. So, if the electron or the proton, if the number density is very high, note that if the number density is very high, the average separation is very small. So therefore, if the average separation is small, that means we are confining the electron within a very small r0, then the uncertainty principle says that r0 times uncertainty in the momentum, the least it can be, least, well, it should be. Uncertainty principle says that it should be greater than or equal to h divided by 4 pi. The minimum is h divided by 4 pi. This is the minimum it can be. So r0 is the uncertainty in the position of either electron or the proton. So the delta p is the jiggly, the moment of uncertainty. And we have deduced that the uncertainty in the momentum delta p is of the order of h divided by 4 pi r. Okay. If the number density is uh, very low, R0 is very large. Delta P will be very small. But our thing is about wide bar. In wide bar, the density, as I said, is huge. So density is huge, means R0 is small. So delta P, the uncertainty in the momentum becomes very large. The electron or the proton, their uncertainty in the momentum is very large. Now, in the case of Supposing the uncertainty is not so large as to make the particles move relativistically, if they are non relativistic, then given the uncertainty in the momentum, what is the uncertainty in the speed? What is the relation between momentum and speed? MV is momentum, so therefore V is P by M. So that is, by the way, that is the relation which is a non relativistic relation. So if the particle, if the uncertainty in the momentum is not very large, then non relativistic physics tells me that uncertainty in the velocity delta v. So, first non relativistic physics, non relativistic physics. In the non relativistic case, therefore, uncertainty in the speed is of the order of h divided by 4 pi r0. Because M into delta V is uncertain. 